Welcome to Minding Your Business, the show for just really fascinating entrepreneurs. I'm your host, June Middleton. Uh, we have three very interesting, diverse, uh, and talented guests on our show this evening, and we're going to talk to them after we spend a little bit of time talking about business formations, and we're going to ask them about the formations of their uh, businesses too, of course. On a, a recent show, I have talked about business structures and the most common forms that businesses can be in New York State, and the sole proprietorship, general partnership, corporations, and limited liability companies, commonly known as LLCs. Uh, these entities are formed by just starting a business by being a freelancer freelance photographer, one of which we have on the show this evening, uh, or registering with the county clerk's office. Uh, if you're a general partnership, you have to register with the county clerk's office. Uh, corporations, the Department of State. And just for a quick review, we talked a little bit uh, last show about uh, the sole proprietorship and the general partnership. One, one owner um, or two or more people who hopefully go into business for profit. Doesn't always work that way, but that's the general uh, idea. Um, and if you go to the county clerk's office, you're a DBA doing business as, because you're using a, a fictitious name. And with other business forms though, such as a corporation uh, or a limited liability company, that is under a fictitious name. And it's with the limited liability company known as the LLC, uh, this is formed with the corporation by filing with the Department of State. This evening's show is going to look at the corporation. Uh, we also have as our guests three incredible and very different and diverse entrepreneurs who will tell you about their businesses and how they got started. I always find this a fascinating topic because everyone starts differently. Some people start with a business plan, others just say, let's just do it. And I get a feeling that our guest this evening just said, let's just go for it. Um, but since we've already covered the um, sole proprietorship and the partnership, we're going to take a look at the corporation. The Sole proprietorship is the easiest and simplest to form, but the corporation is a lot more complex. And you really should uh, take the guidance or talk to an attorney before you do it. And we're just going to talk a little bit about the C Corporation uh, this evening, which is um, a fictitious person. It's a legal entity within itself. And I just started out myself as a uh, sole proprietorship when I was doing bookkeeping to help pay my way through school. Uh, and then after that, when I could afford it, I formed a corporation after graduating. But um, you have to realize that the corporation, which doesn't cost that much to form, but it can become expensive to maintain. And it's called a C corporation by definition because it's a creature of the state. As I said, a fictitious person, it exists on its own. It can form contracts, it can pay taxes, unfortunately, and it um, can hire and fire um, and create products. The corporation, as I said, is, it's a person. It's a creature of the state and it can only be formed by filing with the Department of State. For example, think of uh, the Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company. They started at the turn of the century. Uh, they're known now as uh, A&P and in fact I think recently they even filed for bankruptcy to reorganize to get creditors off their back. But AMP is a person, it's a fictitious person, and they also formed other companies like um, Food Emporium, and they exist though in perpetuity, or what you think of as forever. And the owners who orig originally formed that corporation have long passed for the AMP company 
but A&P still going strong out there fighting bankruptcy and other all other kinds of debts and uh, legal problems but they exist and they will exist long after the original owners are gone one of the best things about a corporation is that it's easy to um, to raise money the corporation can raise money through bonds or stocks and those who own it are actually called shareholders and they as I said, can be ousted from their own companies, even after they are the original shareholders. I just read recently, I think his name is Zimmer, of Men's Warehouse, has been ousted from his company that he started because uh, the shareholders, other shareholders, wanted him out and wanted somebody new in there. So a corporation is a really interesting creature, and its um, shareholders can not have any liability except to the extent of the amount of money, perhaps, that they put in it. And as I said, the shareholders can come and go, live or die, corporation just keeps on going. And the shareholders, though, are also not responsible for the debts and the liabilities of that corporation. The biggest disadvantage, though, of the C corporation is that there's double taxation. The shareholders have to pay taxes on any distributions that they get, and the corporation itself pays taxes. We'll talk about the S corporation, which allows you uh, to actually, it's, it's an election that you can make with the Internal Revenue Service to actually uh, be, have all the profits distributed to the shareholders, but that's something that we'll cover um, in another show. But what I want to get to and find out how they got started, we have these three incredible guests this evening who have been operating on their own, each individually and in some cases together, for a while. Our first guest is a practicing attorney. And she's been here before. And Rachel Rose is very much involved in healthcare. She's written several publications about healthcare. And she has worked with a lot of clients in the areas of being an entrepreneur. And in fact, she has brought a couple of those entrepreneurs with her this evening. Our next guest is founder and CEO of a really interesting and incredible skincare product company and called, which I love the title, Hard Night, Good Morning. I'm sure that comes in very handy <laughs> <laughs> for a lot of your hard partying clients. It applies to many people. <laughs> and a really special treat we have with us an award-winning photojournalist, Jeremy T. Locke, who is really unusual in what he does. He is referred to, I love this, as the Chuck Norris of military photography. And we're just really delighted to have Sounds him here. Sounds so great when you say <laughs> it. <laughs> well, this is really a very exciting lineup, <clears throat> and I am just anxious to talk to you, and welcome to all of you Thank to you. the show. Thank you. And, oh, you're more than welcome. And, I mean, my attention, though, is drawn. <laughs> 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 what happened? <laughs> I was at a stoplight in Houston, and I was rear-ended by a Rolls Royce, and had oh, extensive. Oh, that's good surgery. and bad news, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> at least they're insured. <laughs> well, also too, the Rolls Royce has a nice value. That's so. exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad that you came. I'm glad that you came, and Thank I hope you. you're not in too much discomfort. And yeah. I'm delighted that you brought these two wonderful people <laughs> with you. This is such a treat. And I mean, everybody's outstanding as entrepreneurs. Um, so, but give us an update. You were here before, uh, last, the late, latter part of last year, mm -hmm. I believe, with uh, three other entrepreneurs and our good friend, Shannon McDonald. Yes. Yes, who made the introduction. And you were talking about um, 
that some of the work that you were doing in healthcare, but you, your background and your client base is more than just healthcare. So it, it, just give us a little bit of background on what it is that you actually do as a practicing attorney. As a practicing attorney, I have a broad base that's primarily focused on business, securities, and healthcare law. And uh -oh. what seems very in a posit is actually very complementary. And having the degree set like we discussed before with the JD and the MBA, I've mm -hmm. been fortunate to have a lot of experiences that lend themselves to a lot of different clients. So I still do a lot of work in cybersecurity, which I've been fortunate to speak a lot on and be published extensively on. Mm -hmm. I do mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. lot of audits. I do Dodd-Frank under seal with the Securities now and Exchange Commission. that has to Commission. do with public corporations. It yeah. does. It does. So you mentioned the public corporations, so those are c -Corp which right. are normally publicly traded right, right, on those right. exchanges. Some of mm -hmm. the subsidiaries would be some of the other types. So you being in security uh, with security law with uh, several of your clients is just right up your alley. You're really only dealing with C corporations or S corporations. It depends. So, so for instance, Jeremy and Deandra are incorporated as an LLC in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. And what's fascinating about that is to harken back to our last show, yes, I did have them do business plans. was especially the budget part. <laughs> yeah, that, that is that is always fun. But as you brought up earlier, June, the reason that we did that was to protect them financially <coughs> and to protect their other assets. Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. interesting in the other area of securities that I do is private equity and mm. Regulation D securities. So when we look at companies like Deandra's or like Jeremy's own business, forming them as an LLC enables us in the future, if we want to, to convert it to, to the corporation. a corporation. Right, right, it's right. harder to go in reverse yeah. than it is to move forward. Absolutely. So I'm very fortunate to not only have clients that are similarly situated, Deandra, I get to use my health care with the different FDA laws, both mm -hmm. nationally and internationally. And Jeremy, I do a lot of contract work for and just have a oh. passion for photography and as a world-renowned And, and, and you see, people also. think that, uh, that lawyers have a dull time and that <laughs> talking about business <laughs> and corporations is not interesting. It's one of the most exciting and at times it's almost like, well, your shareholders, your members <laughs> of your LLC, they're, they're like marriage partners. And it just so happens the two of you are married. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> How lucky am I? <laughs> you bet. It's that hard night good morning. <laughs> Tell them that. I, oh, this even makes more sense. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but we'll save that for another show. <laughs> A different rating. Uh, but you have some interesting publications that uh, you have contributed to. You have The Federal Lawyer, which... Uh, where is the page that um, you have? But it's an article that you've written in this publication. And uh, we'll talk some more about that. In fact, you have to come back <laughs> again so that we can talk about some of the things that you have done and the publications that you have uh, been published in and written about. And here you have the ABCs. What, practical handbook on accountable care organizations. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound exciting, but I'm sure you <laughs> have some very interesting points. Not a general, not something that you'd want to read at bedtime. Or maybe it is. If you do healthcare law, or if you work in the field of healthcare and you want to get reimbursed, it probably is. Oh, excellent, <laughs> if you want excellent. To sleep fast. But I'm sure. Exactly. <laughs> I know you have a lot of people who are fascinated by these subjects. And then you have, this is a very impressive one, the Enterprise Risk Management mm -hmm. Handbook. And this is something that, um, now, did you uh, do the editorial work on this? I did. I was one of three editors and was very fortunate to get paired with the other editors on this subject matter who were experts. And what's very interesting about enterprise risk management is that it's not only utilized in healthcare, but it stems back to accounting principles and GAAP oh. and is used in publicly traded corporations. So whenever we look at 
cybersecurity, for example, you look at your enterprise risk management across all of the departments in an organization. And when you talk about cybersecurity, this is the internet. Primarily. More than the internet, it's any of your sensitive information that mm -hmm. is created, received, maintained, or transmitted electronically. Okay, well, we can do a whole show <laughs> alone just on that topic. So how long have you been involved with DeAndra's business? So I have been involved with DeAndra's business just a few months. Yes. I have been very fortunate to meet some amazing people in Dallas, which led yeah. me to both DeAndra and to Jeremy, and I'm both of their attorneys, and I do business items as well with Deandra, and then I'm also Jeremy's agent, in oh, addition to being great. his attorney. Well, I right now would love to talk to both of them, and a beautiful makeup job. Well, thank Is you. that? <laughs> oh my gosh, you look lovely. Thank Is you. that part of your skincare products, or do you have makeup as well? Well, as you said before, I own a skincare company called Hard Night Good Morning, <laughs> and uh, there's many reasons for that. But there's lots <laughs> yeah. of women that have hard nights. My mother, who's in her 70s, says she she says I have. Um, Hard night hot flashes. So oh, it's not only gee. for the soccer woman and the C the soccer mom and the CEO, but every woman. But how did you get started with your uh, skincare product line? Well, I've been developing for about 19 years, and You're um, kidding. my family what are you, was about 25 now. <laughs> no, I'm or actually. Is that the I will, yes, she that's is. A yes, she is. <laughs> I will tell you my age. I'm 46 years old. Um, my mother had cancer and um, she started in the nutrition business and my mother and father were both entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and so I kind of learned at their knee and um, I started developing skincare about um, 19 years ago because of the fact it was an offshoot of the nutrition business and oh natural skincare, aloe vera based skincare and skincare that was as free of as many chemicals as possible but as efficacious as possible at the same time. Okay well I mean it's I, I'm looking at your skin and it looks beautiful. Well, thank you. And I mean, I'm assuming that you're using your own product. I am using my Why own Why don't you, if you will, mm -hmm. just go over to um, the table we have there and tell us about some of your products. Are you primarily e-commerce, you're internet-based, or do you sell in outlets or well, Seth, that's a good question. In New York, I actually sell at a store called Westerly Natural Market, which is on, I believe it's on 8th Avenue and 54th, so um, in oh. the neighborhood. Uh, we also sell online, uh, hardnightgoodmorning.com, and then I sell to Whole Foods in the Southwest and in the Mid-Atlantic. Oh, so, geez. and we're expanding all, right. all the time. Well, tell us about the products that you have here. What, what, which one is it that takes away the wrinkles. This is my anchor product. This is the original product I developed and it's called the Facial Cocktail. I go along with Hard Night Good Morning Facial Cocktail. Mm -hmm. And basically June, it's a lifter, toner, and here, tightener. Here, here, here. Come, and I'm come. gonna take it and bring it over to you and so you can try it here. Yeah, Why don't you yeah, pass huh? that on, honey, to her? Mm. So this was my standout product. It was named one of the best beauty products by the Washington Post magazine when it came out. Um, it's obviously one of my best sellers, June. Uh, it lifts, tones, and tightens, and um, it's basically, it was called an overnight sensation when it came more. out. I'm so that hinting. would be my star product. Oh, this feels lovely. And then my other two best sellers, we have a full line of eight products. We have an AM cleanser and a PM cleanser. One is a gel cleanser for AM, and a PM cleanser is an oil cleanser. Now, is this, uh, people put the women, is it just for women, or is it men as well? Well, my husband, he uses it as well. Um, he, no, oh, that's know. why. <laughs> yes, you I do. Thought it was okay. just I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. The oh. detox toner, which you spray on after you cleanse, is great for men after they shave. It really helps with razor bumps, so it's good unisex product. And then our eye cream was named one of the best eye creams by Natural Health Magazine. Mm -hmm. And um, then the moisturizer, the daytime and nighttime, it's, it's very simple. The daytime moisturizer is great for people with sensitive skin and rosacea. And mm -hmm. um, it's also been named by Vogue magazine in Deutschland as the best natural moisturizer in the U.S. So oh, we have a lot of great this is press wonderful. from it. I'll this pass is these wonderful. around so you can. And I love the way it smells. Yeah. They're all aloe vera. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, very so it's nice. aloe vera based. Africa. The reason for the aloe vera is because aloe vera penetrates and it allows the ingredients to penetrate much more deep. If you think water evaporates, aloe vera penetrates. So oh, aloe vera is always is, the basis for all of my skincare products. This is terrific. So well, you have to come back so that we can get yes, more into and I'm gonna bring this over your, here. your products and to um, talk about them and oh, 
This is so impressive. Well, thank you for having it's me so on. I appreciate impressive. the opportunity. And Rachel has been wonderful um, working with me. We're kind of looking at new avenues for um, expanding the business and uh, the business model, new products, um, new places to sell the product right now. We're meeting with people in New York. Well, so, this is um, terrific. This I think it's terrific. just going to be just yes. really interesting the next well, year what happens. We'd like to talk, uh, yes. I'd like to talk to this gentleman to okay. your right whose skin also is glowing, stuff. and I'm he's glowing. Stuff. I'm, <laughs> I'm glowing because of my beautiful wife. That's, oh, that's my gosh. <laughs> Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, you are more than welcome. And, I mean, you are an award-winning photojournalist with a bronze star. Yeah. And you are an airman. Oh, that's, you were that's with the correct. Air Force. And you have won the military photographer of... Um, for the last seven years? I've won it seven times. Not for the last for seven the, years, but, for, but seven, yes, seven, seven, seven that's times. That's so, so impressive. I think impressive. the person who came closest was a three-time winner. Now, did you develop your skills as a photojournalist in the service? Absolutely, in the service. Aha. Uh -huh. And were you, you were trained on land, in the air? Yes, ma'am. And underwater Absolutely. are you you're certified as a deep sea diver I, I am certified as a diver as well yes I am oh my gosh yeah. that's why that I've, I've had an amazing is there that <laughs> I experienced when I hugged you earlier <laughs> <laughs> well, we can hug again that's why I like hugs but uh, Yes, I, I just retired recently, uh, two years ago. Oh, come on. So, 21 years you're, in the military. You're 25, he's what, 30? <laughs> Darn it, I'm supposed to be It's all because of those skincare products. <laughs> That's right. Ah, oh, terrific. Well, let's look at some of your work. Absolutely. Because I really enjoyed having an opportunity to see it. And I know that you've also done a lot of work at the Burning Man Festival. You can yes. tell us a little bit about that. But let's just take a look at what it is um, that you have here. So I think the, the, this image and the following images is, is, are going to show some of my aerial work. When now, I was, where were you when you took that? We were over Jordan, Iraq. No, no, I mean, Jordan. where were you physically? Were you standing oh, in I'm the... I'm strapped oh. in. I'm hanging off the ramp as oh, I'm, my I'm gosh. doing this. And we were over uh, Jordan right before the uh, Iraq war. Oh. But one of the things I was, I was trained as is I was an aerial combat photographer as well. So I have over 800 hours in various aircraft. That, so uh, you are a pilot I'm as not well. a pilot, but anything that has two seats, I'm in the next seat taking pictures. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> and, and I have no, no, I don't want to ever jump out of a plane. That's, doesn't do it for me. I'll sit there at the end and of the ramp. And you'll watch others jump absolutely, out. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, oh my gosh. Now, you have also, what, tell us a little bit about this one. This was another aerial shot from the Colorado wildfires in 2013. Oh. So uh, when all the big wildfires were going on, I was one of the only people that was allowed up on the mountain uh, to photograph the firefighters working oh on the mountain. Oh my gosh. Mountain. Oh, that is incredible. And now you've got some, uh, tell us about this. Yeah, the next three images are from a series which I call 21. It was the first series that I launched as an exhibition getting out of the military. Mm -hmm. And what the 21 is, is it's 21 of my favorite shots from 21 oh. years of service. Is they, this, uh, you did a, a show on CBS? Um, CBS, yes, they did highlight me with some of this work. This, this one's actually got, from Haiti, uh, the earthquake in Haiti. And this is where you got the nickname of the Chuck Norris. Yeah, uh, of, that's uh, such a huge honor. <laughs> <laughs> that's a huge honor. <laughs> oh, Someday yes. I'm going to meet him, too, I'll tell you. <laughs> tell us about this. This is, uh, they say, this is a trip I did. One of my last trips with the military was over in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And they say in Mongolia, a Mongolian without a horse is like a bird without wings. Oh, so they, they yeah. really cherish their horses. And this yes. was what they do after a horse race, and the horse won. So it's customary to pour milk over the over. Oh, oh. Now, I think you have, these, those three were all that we just uh, went through were from Burning Man. Yeah. I think. Um, or actually, no, this is, this is the end of the 21 series. And this oh, is, all right. This is over in uh, Djibouti, Africa, and just some leisure time that we had, and uh, a Navy commander that was just out snorkeling. You know, I, I like to try to mix things up and, and either get you high, have get low. You such a wide breadth of uh, Absolutely. talent and uh, skills well, and abilities. Thank you very much. And it's just so exciting and impressive. Now, this is from the Burning Man Festival. Right. This is from the uh, Burning Man. And I call this uh, series uh, Burner's Essence. So it's really capturing um, 
the characters that are out there. There is just, so, I think, some of the most beautiful people in the world that, that are out there at Burning Man. Well, and you know, this Burning is Man is just such an interesting uh, festival in it itself. Is. I mean, without any, um, you know, formalities or garnishes of, uh, you know, you're, formal you're going to meet all walks of life, from doctors, lawyers, to mm -hmm. Google execs, to, you know, your I regular think hippies. recently um, a rap, uh, rapper attended. Mm -hmm. There was a couple, yeah, there's... there's Quite a, a few famous well people known, that go as uh, well. Well, I can't remember who it was, but and and what is this one? Uh, uh, just another burner portrait, and I, I, I didn't. I went there to be a photojournalist and came mm -hmm. out an artist, and I think that's what Burning Man did to me mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. allowed me to to really capture the beauty of the people that were. Now you there. have one of a musician, oh, Cancer Blows. So that's being a new, you know, in this new business, um, learning that. I have to be kind of a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. My heart and passion is is definitely in photojournalism. Oh, I can see that. But what I'm learning to do is is to to now see things um, in a different way, so that now, my, my that, business can go. Is that related go. to the last photo that we have here? I think of uh, a trip to Africa. Yes. That you just recently well, made. Again, this is a, a trip to Africa. Uh, my wife and I decided to take some time off and, and work a little bit. You know, we like time these. Time work. Yeah, we, we, but we like these adventure kind of vacations. And so while I was over there, I did uh, I did a personal project where in Namibia I did a lot of aerial work and combined it with uh, portraits of the Himba people who are wow. indigenous to Namibia. Well, you know, you're not going to believe it, but we are out of time. <laughs> Already? Yeah. Like I said, you're not going to we're having fun. <laughs> yeah, right. We're just getting warmed up. So that means we have to do this again. We absolutely have to do it again. And I just want to thank you so much for being our guest this evening. Thank you. It's been really Extreme interesting pleasure. and exciting. And I, I mean, the, the, the depth of your skills and talents and businesses, is, it just uh, it leaves you wanting to hear more about what it is that you're doing. So I just want to say thank you to our wonderful crew. Thank you, a special thank you to Rich here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network for making this show possible. You have been watching Minding Your Business, the show for very talented and versatile entrepreneurs. I'm your host, June Middleton, and please join us again and see yourself where you want to be. Victor.